So the Ivy League um, um, in the last eight years has had a really good record in NCAA tournament play. Um, they've won three games. Um, in 2014, uh, Harvard beat Cincinnati. Um, in, uh, in 2016, Yale beat Baylor in a 5-12 game. Uh, last year, Princeton beat Arizona in the 2-15 game. Um, and three of the losses were fewer than five points. Um, this Yale team lost to LSU the year that we played them by, by, by the LSU, which was the league champions, regular season champions, by just five. Um, and this Yale team lost to Purdue in 2022. So this has been a, a team that's been in a tournament, I think, what, three? Uh, uh, and three times since 2016, uh, this coaching staff. Um, this is a really good team, a really good program. Um, and, and, and they've got a really good history of first-run upsets. Uh, why, why is that? Because they play the right way because they play hard, they play physically, they're from the Ivy League, so they're smart. Um, and, um, um, you know, it's, um, um, they'll run great stuff. They got great three-point shooters. Um, they got a seven-foot, seven-one, um, you know, pro that's probably going to be more of an international pro, but there are people talking about it potentially in the NBA. Um, so it's, uh, it's, 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 they've got, they've got some really good pieces. So we've got, uh, we've got that. Um, we'll prepare for them primarily. We, we understand that, you know, the way we look at it is it's a, a, a four team tournament with San Diego State and UAB in the field. And so as you guys know, I separate my scouting, my, 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 my staff, and we have three scout teams um, that are each on Yale, UAB, and San Diego State. There's going to be, uh, there will be, there have been a lot of talk about our seating. I'm fine with our seed. Um, le would like for it to be better, um, but I'm not, uh, the, you know, I, uh, um, I'm okay with our seed. Um, could be better, but I'm okay with it. I've talked about it before. I'll talk about it again. Um, you know, very excited about going to Spokane, beautiful city. Very excited about going to Gonzaga and seeing that campus. But I'd prefer to go there fishing um, and, and go hang out with Mark Few. Um, I, just think, I just think about our fans and I just think about our players' parents. And I think about the families that are you know, trying to get out there. Uh, the pod system was created so that you didn't have to do this. You know, so that's my only complaint. We're leaving on Tuesday to play a game on Friday in another time zone. You know, the Tuesday departure was our choice, but I'd love to leave Tuesday after even even tonight. But we couldn't leave tonight. We had to leave. We had to leave early afternoon, so we had to miss class. And then, and then, you know, whoever's fortunate enough, you know. But I, we, we, we already know that if we are to, if we win, if we win, and if we're fortunate enough to win, if we're blessed to win, if we're lucky enough to win, we don't leave till Monday. Where, where should we go Monday? Come back to Auburn. My advice, so rather than just, just complaining about things, my, my, my advice would be to do a study of where the teams are in the country that are making the tournament. And if there's a preponderance of teams that are in the southern part of the country that are making the tournament or the west or the northeast or the 
then have more regions, have more pods in those locations. So we're very excited about being in it. Um, and, uh, but that would be something I, I would not be doing my, do my job um, as part of the process with the NCAA. I'm, we're, we're part of it. I'm just a coach, but I'm part of it. Questions? Um, quick turnaround. How, how's the team sort of handling celebrating Sunday night and then it's, yeah. it's Yale? Well, if you notice, I didn't mention anything about Sunday yeah. um, and I'm not going to talk about it much. Um, you asked me a question about it um, because that's a challenge. Um, after the game, and all you've got to do is you learn by your own experiences or you learn by experiences of others. Um, and because I've congratulated Tennessee on a number of occasions publicly because of what an incredible champion, regular season championship that is given the quality of our league. Uh, this is not a criticism, but it's just to learn from after clinching on at South Carolina, which is just, again, an incredible accomplishment. Lose, there's nothing wrong with losing to Kentucky at home, a talented, very talented Kentucky team and a really hard-playing physical Mississippi State team. But they're 0-2 since they won the championship. Part of that is the quality of the teams they're playing. Part of that is just human nature. It's human nature. Our guys should should have celebrated Sunday and probably even yesterday. So what we did yesterday was we met, we got a stretch, we watched a little bit of film of how we guarded because they could understand, look, that's why we won because of the way we guarded. And that was it. We made the gym available for some shots. Again, not knowing even yesterday when we were leaving. We didn't find out till last night at 10.30 when we were leaving, which then meant you know, we had a last night make a decision on, okay, how long can they go, go in class? I've got some guys that have an 11. I'm going to start trying to stay at 10.30 right now because we have to leave at 1. But I had some guys that have a really important 11 o'clock class, and I'm going to have some of those guys late to practice. So we wouldn't, they would not have practiced yesterday. And they're going to only practice maybe about a 45 minutes today because of just this time and travel and, and, and all this is just not necessary for a Friday game. But, but we don't have a choice. Um, the, uh, um, I mean, I think our guys are, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be excited about playing in, a, in this tournament and, uh, and, and we'll get them, we'll get them ready. <clears throat> Sorry, it's just something you've talked about kind of all season, with like Denver Jones, for example, is like guys that came to Auburn to kind of take on less minutes, kind of more of a role player and from whatever smaller school that they may have been at in the past. I guess to turn that recruiting pitch and win an SEC championship with it, is that validating of what you kind of wanted to sell to these to these guys last summer? Um. Yeah, I thought I thought this was a good team, and I hate to keep using the same lines, but I thought this was a good team that had a chance to be very good. We all talked about that we, we thought we would be a team that would shot it better than the year before. Um, we talked about whether or not this team was going to be able to defend and be physical enough. And I think if you would look at – we're right about the shooting, um, and we became a better defensive team, and we, and we, and we, and we became physical enough to be able to compete. And so I think this team made a lot of progress. Um, I think this coaching staff, um, my staff did an outstanding job with player development, and and I think the guys did a great job all year long of 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 being unselfish and 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 all being patient and all accepting less individually, so that we as a team could achieve more. That's pretty. Anyone in the league that, that's sort of comparable in terms of play style to what you've seen from Yale on tape so far? Well, we played them two years ago, and Coach Jones is a great coach, and like most great coaches, they are who they are, right? And so he is who they are, who he is who they are, and that's how they played. They'll have some variations from in personnel, but 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 they've been he'd been doing it a long he'd been doing it really well for a long time, 
And so, um, um, you know, you've got that that five out Ivy League Princeton stuff, that, but they're all but they all run. It's not just Princeton; everybody runs it, so they're really good at it. Obviously, they got a couple of guys that are like ridiculously dangerous from shooting, you know, shooting the ball. Um, and so, you know, specifically, um, Mahoney is, is like he's probably he's probably the best set three point shooter in college basketball. Like he's shooting sixty percent right now from a three in his last five. <laughs> and he is you know, he's a left hander. He's got good size, and he's their third leading scorer. And again, they've got a seven-foot center that that's kind of fun to watch because he can. He's a big kid that's got real skills. He can shoot it. He can put it on the floor. Like they break pressure with him, he'll bring the ball up the floor. He's an old school. He's a throwback. Um, and then number four, who's their leading scorer, their best player. I'm just going to try not to mess up his name, so it's no disrespect. Um, let's just say John. Um, He's, uh, he's, he's, he's a very, very versatile player. Uh, can score inside and out and a you know, great playmaker. And their point guard is, uh, is athletic and tough and fast. It gets downhill. So it's a nice they got some really good pieces. You talk about sitting down and guarding and defending and how that was the key for you all to win, the, win this tournament. How much, how much does that help against a team like Yale who – is very patient with the ball, doesn't turn it, turn it over. Just, just having that, you know, kind of that experience, you know, experience yeah, doing the that. The key is to defend. The key is to defend without fouling. That's the key, to continue to defend the way we like to defend. But, but, you know, no, no, it's uh, no, and you just, you also just don't know too about how the game will be called. I do know as the, as you progress in the tournament, with every game, they continue to let you play more and more, and so we hope that's the case in game one. Uh, Coach, piggybacking off what you said a couple minutes ago, you said on Wednesday before the SEC tournament, this was a very good team that had a, you know an opportunity to be to be great. Just kind of, what's your assessment of them getting up to that next tier? If they haven't already become a great team, what do you think they need to do in your eyes to to kind of solidify that uh, this year? Well, I just think I think you know just this is our this is a great this this team has been great. You can't win a championship without being great, so they're already great. They don't have to do anything else to be great. Nothing. As we move forward now, um, we have an op we put ourselves in position. We have an opportunity, um, and and so we just truly need to keep doing keep doing what we're doing, keep defending. You know, keep. We could, could we do a better job on, on rebounding? We didn't dominate. We weren't dominant in our, our rebounding. So was, we got to continue to do a good job of that, and continue to stay unselfish and uh, make shots. Bruce. Um Chris Moore and what he's done the last week or two, what has that meant to you personally for a guy you worked with for four years, and what has it meant to the team? Yeah, I think, I think it's just I talked about it before, but I think it's a great lesson in life. Um, and uh, first of all, you know, you know, so much of this team, I, I do hope that, uh, you know, I hope we can advance for a lot of reasons, but one of, the, one of the reasons, I think, from a national standpoint is to tell this story about J Jalen Williams' five years in a program, and Dylan Caldwell and Chris Moore. Uh, and Lua Berman five years in a program, and Dylan Caldwell and Chris Moore um, being four years in a program, and uh, you know Katie Johnson, you know three, and guys that have been here a while, right? And uh, in this day and age of you know of, of the transfer portal and NIL, um, it's a throwback. And um, when we, it's a de it's it's a it's a demonstration of that when we are successful as a team, you as an individual can benefit far more than if you as an individual are successful, but the team fails. This team did not fail. And we had many individuals that have been recognized. Um, Chris Moore, um, um, he, uh, um, he's a great chemistry guy, he's a great teammate, great in the locker room, great leader, uh, loves Auburn. Um, and cared so much about the team and his teammates. He didn't want to let he didn't want to let his teammates down or his coaches down by making mistakes earlier in the year, and uh, put too much pressure on himself, and as a result, didn't perform well, and uh, lost his rotation, lost his minutes to Leo Berman, um, and understood that he had lost them. Um, didn't complain about it. 
was disappointed but understood. But when he and I talked, and I said, you're going to, you know, this, you know, this is what it is right now, but you got to stay right and ready because it can change. He said, I know, Coach. I said, but now when it does, what did you learn? And, and, and will you take what you've learned and, and be right and ready next time? And the answer was simply, don't be afraid to fail. Go out there and be aggressive. And stop letting your the fact that you care so much get in the way of your enjoying the game and uh, having joy in the game, right? And he's done that. And his teammates are thrilled. So are we. Teammates and coaches.